Our top story this evening, a Chinese New Year gathering has been established as a possible link between two COVID-19 clusters involving churches. One of them is the Grace Assembly of God cluster, Singapore's largest. The link was discovered through a new uh, serological test developed by researchers at Duke and U.S. Medical School that detects virus-specific antibodies after a person has recovered from the infection. Now, for more, we're joined by Assistant Professor Danielle Anderson from Duke and U.S. Medical School's Emerging Infectious Diseases Program. Uh, Professor Anderson, uh, this latest confirmed case had visited Zengkang General Hospital with symptoms consistent with COVID-19, but was not tested at the time. Uh, tell us about that. So at the time they visited the hospital, uh, the criteria for uh, recommending that people be tested for COVID-19, which it wasn't even called that at that stage, was different. So um, at that time, the, that person, um, I believe, didn't have the links that, um, that the doctors were looking out for. So uh, the criteria have since changed. So if they visited the hospital now, they would have been set up for testing. But at the time, um, yeah, as I said, it was, it's a different set of criteria. Um, so, Professor, tell us about this new test that's developed by Duke NUS and how is it different the serological test? So the actual test is, uh, it's not entirely different, but the context in which we're using those tests are different. So we have two different assays, serological assays. One's called ELISA, and that particular test uses parts of the virus protein and not the live virus. And then you look for patient antibodies in, to see if they've been exposed. The second test that we used in combination is called a virus neutralization test. And uh, so we use that assay also to look for the antibodies in, in the patient's blood. And these, it, the reason that it's possible that we could use these tests in combination is Duke NUS Medical School was able to, as most people probably know, isolate the virus very quickly after the initial outbreak. So we were able to combine those reagents and develop the two tests. And the, it's the context that in which these tests were used that uh, I think uh, the worldwide um, breakthrough, I guess, to be, be able to track patients without apparent links at the beginning. Well, what does it mean if, vi if virus-specific antibodies remain in the blood after recovery? Does that help then develop immunity? So, yes, actually. So those, the people that are, uh, have recovered, so the people that have been discharged from the hospital, they they've overcome the infection and their uh, immune system has fought the virus off. So now they're left with antibodies in their blood. So essentially those people are the same as if, if we develop a vaccine against this virus, the vaccine works to protect people by um, letting their immune system develop antibodies. So then when they see the virus uh, in, in real life, they will be protected. So uh, the current discharge patients now have immunity against this coronavirus. Um, Professor, speaking of this immunity against the virus, but China is now saying that those who have been discharged or recovered from COVID-19 can be infected again. Is that the case? Do we know enough about this virus to make that statement? So uh, without seeing the, the exact report that mentioned that, um, what happens when you have either, if you've been infected with the virus or if you have had a vaccine, when, if you're exposed to the virus again, you still will be infected technically, but the difference is that your immune system is now strong enough and has antibodies and then you can fight off the infection. So uh, it's the same, I guess, if you think about it, like um, when you get the measles shot as a child, you have antibodies against measles. So if you come into contact with that virus, you, you will have the antibodies in your blood to fight off the infection. And there, maybe there's speculation about uh, the, this virus because it's new, but we know from patients that were in, infected with SARS, those patients still have antibodies in their blood even now, and it's been, I think, 17 years since the SARS outbreak. So uh, it, that is, it, that's one good thing to come out of, if, if we can say anything good comes out of it, uh, there's the patients that are discharged from hospital uh, do have immunity. Well, thank you so much for speaking and helping us understand this better. I've been speaking with Assistant Professor Danielle Anderson from Duke NUS Medical School's Emerging Infectious Diseases Program.